Hi, everyone. Welcome to Admiral Markets webinar. We're going to take a look at live Forex uh, trading, in fact, and live price action. Uh, we can take a look at commodities and stock indices as well. First of all, though, be aware, though, that this webinar is shown to a global audience. It may not be suitable for everyone. Take a look at AdmiralMarketsGlobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity for more information on that. Also, please be aware that trading for exchange at global financial markets is considered high risk. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. This webinar is not advice and is for informational and educational purposes only. By continuing watching this webinar, you agree with this disclaimer and you are aware of the risk involved when trading. All right, thank you so much for your attention on that. In this webinar, we're taking a look at discretionary technical analysis using four concepts step-by-step -step sequence that will be analyzing the charts. First of all, we're going to take a look at trend and momentum to see what is the prevailing direction that is dominating at this point, and do we want to trade with it, perhaps against it, depending on divergence and perhaps support or resistance and other patterns. Then, after we've decided which direction is desirable, we're looking for opportunities to trade in that direction. For instance, Fibonacci and patterns in general are always interesting ways to try to uh, get a trade into uh, the direction you want. Thirdly, we want to check if there are any filters going on, like support or resistance nearby, pivot points, for instance, a news event. Fourthly, when we know what direction uh, we want to trade and we see a good, uh, you know, a good uh, moment to do so without any filters being there and a good opportunity, then we're looking at how to trade it, the trading plan, basically. So we'll be planning it. For instance, in this case, we could have been looking at the fibs for a bounce, and that could have been the decision zone when price retraces back to a fib. But the trigger could have been a candlestick, a reaction at the fib, or the break of uh, the falling wedge and the resistance line indicated in red. Those could have been triggers to trade it. And then last but not least, I'm looking at the reward to risk ratio to see if it justifies taking that trade. This week, we have uh, basically the main things for this week are a pound news event uh, tomorrow, GDP. That, of course, is going to be interesting to see how the second quarter behaved uh, after the Brexit. This is the first time we're looking at a GDP a number. Of course, the Brexit hasn't officially occurred yet, but the vote did happen and uh, a slim majority uh, wished a Brexit to happen. So that will be interesting to see how the entire vote perhaps had it didn't have an influence uh, on uh, the GDP in the second quarter. Were people perhaps a bit more cautious with spendings and investments? Uh, and is the whole economy slowing down or, or is it the same? We'll find out tomorrow. Today we have new home sales on the US. Uh, Thursday, tomorrow as well, of course, we have basically the FOMC that uh, and the Fed interest rate decision. Well, that's going to be interesting, of course, to see. How is the FOMC thinking? Uh, how do they see the economic development uh, going in the US? Are they going to be a bit more optimistic? And are they going to indicate a rate hike chance? You know, and if so, when uh, this year could that occur? So these are the questions we want to get more info and try to see if we find any info in, in that statement. And last but not least, well, we also have uh, the yen. The Bank of Japan is going to have a meeting. And will they continue with quantitative easing? Will the yen change course and, and start to weaken? Or or will it keep with its strengthening that we've seen recently? So that will be important for, for the yen pairs. All right. Now, one thing before we head off to our charts, please, if you're interested in joining more webinars, in general with us, you can do so by going to admiralmarkets.com, click on education, click on webinars, and you'll see tomorrow we have same time, same place strategy, Forex strategy. We're taking a look at momentum and correction. Uh, Nenad is taking a look how to trade the Frankfurt Open. And Thursday evening, we have breakout and fake out trading, high probability setups. All right, so enough said on that. Good morning, Avalda. It's good to see you. So there are some breakouts happening as we speak. Peak actually, or they already occurred. Uh, some setups that uh, uh, perhaps you managed to catch if you listen to uh, the weekly Forex video that I present on Mondays. Those breakouts have already occurred. So let's see, you know, what kind of trade ideas 
uh, that uh, are interesting. After these breakouts, so the yens have broken to the downside, as you may have seen already this morning. Uh, throughout today's session, we see that, the, for instance, the dollar yen pushing through this triangle, pushing through the support, and, and making basically that ABC that I was already expecting. Uh, I thought that was a bit higher likelihood. Now, the alternative would have been a break basically uh, above this top, and then we would have been breaking daily resistance trend line, this one to be precise, right here. That would have been breaking that trend line, and there could have been uh, a reversal breakout, a, a bullish momentum to the upside continuation there. That could have been quite substantial. Uh, we didn't. Price respected this trend line instead, bounced, and broke support. So instead of breaking to the upside, it actually bounced and reverted back down, breaking the mini support on this daily chart, mini support at least, as you can see, pushing through that, falling back down to fibs. And I think there's a chance to fall back not only to the fibs, but perhaps even to the bottom to retest these bottoms right in here. Uh, so that's something I think that could be interesting to take a look if there's some short potential trades there, potential short trades, excuse me, that make sense for this fall. Now, I, just looking at this chart, would not be too optimistic about necessarily this bottom being broken. It could happen, uh, but if we look even higher to a monthly chart and get rid of this, this, this particular FIB, then in that case, one second. If we look at a monthly chart, we still see, of course, a huge momentum up. And this downside could just be a retracement of that big upside. And we're at a 50 fib. So it could be a bouncing spot as well. So that's something that still is very much in the picture, a bounce at the 50 fib. Now, of course, if we break through 100 and price starts to break through these lows, then price could fall down to the next fib, which is at the 61.8 fib at 95. So I'm not saying that downside, bigger downside is not possible, but we're going to have to break this trend line and uh, this bottom, basically, these bottoms here. And then we have space, this dollar yen has space for falling down to the 61.8 fib. All right, so we've got space to fall, but only to test these bottoms. I wouldn't be aiming lower than that. Only when we break those bottoms, then, of course, there's more likelihood of a, a continued fall towards the 95. <clears throat> now... If price respects this level and this zone, there could be a bigger a turn. And in that case, I wouldn't be surprised if we do get a, a decent bounce here, uh, that maybe this trend line will break finally and we'll get a bigger correction or reversal to the upside like that based off this 50 fib. So it's an exciting spot. Both sides have a lot of potential. At this moment, what I thought was the most likely what I think is the most likely is downside to the trend line and bounce, then bounce, and then a break. So let's see if that happens. But, you know, I'm open to obviously trading it to the downside once these support levels break. All right, so let's go back down again. And, and now we know the importance of uh, the entire structure, the entire, um, you know, time frame perspective. Let's see lower and lower what, what it looks like. We can put a FIB from basically here to here and see what kind of support levels could be on the way. 78.6 FIB is very important, 101.60. All right, price just reached the minus 61.8 target. <clears throat> Excuse me. That could be a bouncing spot. And uh, therefore not tradable right now at this point to the downside. Uh, too close to the target. Obviously, it was a great trade uh, when price was breaking this uh, this triangle, this support level, and maybe even from these fibs. If you took, if you looked at my wave analysis, you were already knew that these fibs were, in my opinion, resistance spots that could cause a turnaround. So perhaps you already took it earlier. The breakout was the confirmation. Those are good trades. Now price is right at the minus 61.8 target. That is a very important uh, level for my, for my trading. Targets like this is always respected, always have to be careful, and I'm not going to trade it right a few couple of pips right in front of that target. So re reward to risk ratio is horrible here. The target is 10 pips away, and the stop loss would have to be, well, somewhere way, way up higher, uh, maybe even all the way up here. We're looking at a 200 pip stop loss for a 10 uh, target. Obviously, that's ridiculous. 10 target, sorry, uh, 200 risk and a 10 target 
makes no sense um, at all. So that would not make sense. So what we need to wait for is a retracement, some kind of bear flag would do, and a break of that bear flag or try trading the top of the bear flag. If a more aggressive correction is seen, then it depends. The best is a bear flag, to be honest. But <clears throat> if price is showing kind of a, an ABC zigzag like this, it could still be worth trading one more time down like that. But if the upside is very aggressive, and then we get an ABC zigzag down, you want to be careful because then in that case, it could be the bouncing spot. So in most cases, uh, an upside should see downside, um, I would say, to, to deeper fibs here. All right, so that's, that looks, I think that that's still a very good potential there. Uh, and that's still the most likely. I'm just saying that if you see, for instance, on a five minute or 50 minute chart, you see five waves up like this, and then you see an ABC zigzag, well, then you, you want to be realistic and you could expect to bounce uh, as if we test this bottom. That's the only thing I'm trying to warn you for. Uh, otherwise, if it's if it's a three wave, if it's a bear flag, more downside to these fibs. If it's a ABC, a turnaround seems likely towards these fibs. All right, your dollar is moving up uh, within this. Uh, at, at first, it was a bear flag. Now it's become a channel. The difference between a bear flag and a channel is the fib ratio. It respects, if it's respecting the 38, 23.6 fib, it's a bear flag. If it breaks above the 50, it's not a bear flag anymore. Bear flags are mild corrections, are um, shallow angled channels that show no impulsiveness and therefore are expected to see a continuation. Um, so this is not a bear flag anymore. This is a, a stronger correction that is taking us to the 61.8 fib. It is breaking this resistance trend line as, as we speak, but I don't think that that is necessarily uh, a key. It's, it was good to have on the chart because it could have been a turning spot, but price broke through that. Still, I think though, these fibs, as I said yesterday, I think could be proved to be important for downside continuation. And if, if they don't, and if price breaks through this top, then uh, you know the, the bearishness is, at least temporarily, uh, out of the window, and you know we, the price is in that case probably going to retest bigger resistance. Right? So I wouldn't necessarily jump. I wouldn't jump in a in a long as it breaks this top. But as it break, what I would recognize is that the bearishness, the bearish trend is is over, or is not active at this moment. I would recognize that any dip could could be a good spot, especially within this channel. To uh, as we extend this channel like this, you'll see that better. So break, pull back, and it could bounce towards the higher resistance. All right, so a trade from here to about there in the future might make sense for upside. As long as we don't break this and pull back, upside does not look interesting at all, and only downside is an option. But even downside, so let's talk about that, is not necessarily maybe um, you know the best right now. Uh, let's take a look at the four-hour chart. So first of all, we had a break of this triangle already a while ago. That triangle break uh, did see a trend to the downside start with lower lows, lower highs. And this could be, again, a lower high. One thing, though, that is really needed before this becomes you know, a trend of importance is a break of this bottom. Because otherwise, it is uh, still a very mild kind of uh, event or trend, and all of it could still be a correction. You know, the longer it takes, the longer price does not break this bottom. It could all be an extended correction, and price could still go up to 112.50 before we get perhaps that bigger downtrend that I'm thinking of uh, could occur. It only, basically, the only time the bearish trend on the long term scale is invalidated is if price breaks through that through this top at about 114 otherwise um you know all in all this is still correction for more downside that's my view at this point <clears throat> so but the downside will only really see an acceleration or, or i mean 
has a chance of seeing a good follow through if we at the very minimum break this bottom. I mean, this, that's you know, if this is a wave one and this is a wave two, well, you know, wave threes, you know, they go a lot further than wave one. So if this is a wave three and it's not even breaking the bottom of wave one, well, you know, that's not uh, not a wave three. That's not that's not uh, impulsiveness. Now, you know, wave three don't have to start right away. Within wave three, we could have various waves one, two, right? And what that is actually what I have now at this moment. I have a wave one, two here, and a wave one of a lower degree, one, two here. All right. <clears throat> so uh, that could happen. And then later on, we could get the bigger downside. And that is very normal. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Um, so it could still happen. I'm just saying that if we do break above this top, then that wave one, two is for sure not valid. That's out of the window. It's just breaking the rules of what a wave one, two should be. So not possible anymore. And in that case, a larger correction um, seems uh, yeah, likely. And I will analyze it again, you know, the waves uh, when that happens. But uh, it seems likely then in that case that there's a bigger correction going on. And this is probably not a wave one, two, or, or it is maybe still a wave one, two like this, but uh, there is a, an increasing chance that we'll just get more correction and sideways uh, movement. And then later on, you know, it could still happen, of course, that we get that downside. All right, so enough talked about that, but, but basically at this point, pretty good four hour candle. So if something like this, four hour candle like this, I think could be a good signal. Uh, for a reversal back down. Uh, the other way to do it would be a break of this this flag, or I should say channel. Uh, if price basically still ends bullish, right? Let's see how much uh, how much time is left on this candle. All right, there we go. I, sorry, it's a, taking a bit longer than I was hoping for. Let me change this into a, a more visible color, perhaps. I'm not sure why I don't see it. Ah, there, ah, it's, it's behind the uh, mini terminal. That's why I was hidden. So there is, <clears throat> All right, there's 115, it says. So that's less than two hours. So about two hours left, actually. These are minutes. So two hours left. So we're only halfway this candle. So, you know, we don't know how this candle will end. Maybe it will be like a small bullish candle like this. Then, you know, there's a good chance that price could even go up to the 78.65 before we turn around. All right, but we'll definitely see if we get a good reaction at the 61.8. If not, if we get a good reaction to 78.6 fib or 88 for a turnaround. I see at this point on the hourly chart, you know, you got good two hour candles and these are just small candles retracing that upside. So at this moment, I mean, if you look at the hourly chart, at least it looks more like a retracement from rough side to the next fib than it really does as a reversal at this moment. Uh, but uh, we will find out, I guess, uh, how the four-hour candle looks like. That will that will be valuable information. All right. Otherwise, uh, the break of this channel, something like, for instance, a candle, an hourly candle pushing through like this, small retracement, and follow-through would seem likely. Now, regarding pending orders, if you know if you're not don't have time to manage trades, for instance, I think a 78.6 fib pending order with a stop loss above this top. Uh, I think does make sense that, you know, you, you never know. Of course, a trade could always uh, end up in a loss. But I think that that does make sense. There's a good chance that price will at least show some bounce there. <clears throat> there's a good chance that price will respect that level without pushing through this level. And let's face it, there's a good chance that price could just fall down to uh, the targets and uh, go down to 108.50, for instance. 
So there's a lot of potential reward here. And there's a small risk. Now, I'm not sure if I would aim necessarily that deep and that far because we do have a news event tomorrow, the FMOC. So, you know, maybe a smaller target is better to get out of that trade before the news event happens. But in theory, you know, you, know, you can see the potential at least uh, huge reward potential, small risk. Even if this, this trade is 50-50, it's a winning potential there. Uh, Long-term profitable, profitable trade setup. So I like the 78.6 Feb. And situations like this, I think, are when a, a pending order has some value and you know makes makes sense. I think uh, some cases setups are not as strong, don't have the reward to risk that is is very favorable, uh, and 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 then I rather keep an eye on price and see if there's some reaction. Wait for some candlestick formations first, some patterns. Um, in some cases, if there's some good uh you know good benefits good advantages that uh, a pending order has like this then i think it does make sense all right any questions of course feel free to let me know but there are some other things that are interesting to go uh to talk about so that's one on a dollar again potential trade on your dollar uh trades in fact that the pound usd now is uh, also interesting to talk about is breaking to the downside as we speak target is 78.6 fib at 129.40 now i'm saying i'm mentioning this conservative target because we do see i'm still very cautious of that we do see a five wave pattern here and five wave patterns don't necessarily end like that as a correction now you know, this is one of those cases where uh, it, you know, this this is a pretty deep wave four as well. Let's take a look. 50 fib. All right, so it's it's a it's a it's a it's a one that I'm not really uh, very confident in either way, to be honest. But. One of the reasons why I still think 78.65 could be a bouncing spot is because ultimately this could still be a wave A, this is a B, and this could be a C. So that's why I want to be careful with the target. Now, obviously, if it breaks this bottom, we're back in a downtrend for sure. The break of the support trend line is important, but not everything. It, it doesn't mean the price will fall down to 125. It could only fall to 129.40, for instance, to the 78.65. So what could be a good way to trade this? Let's take a look at the four hour chart if it's zoomed in and you can see price breaking through it. So what I would like to see is a good breakout candle. And that's something we'll talk about on Thursday as well. Thursday, I'm gonna tell you that uh, a candle like this needs to be closed. The candle needs to have a low, a close near low. And um, has to have a decent size. Now it already has a decent size. So that's already taken care of. The, the bigger, the better. Uh, if it closes near the low, I think that is a good breakout candle. And uh, I think that it is tradable. And I think that I would put a FIB on the candle and I would look for a 38.2 FIB retracement. I think that a tight stop loss could be above the candle high. And I think aiming for the 78.6 FIB or the tight above it, like 129.60, if you really want to be conservative, aim for 130. 30 uh, because of the 130 psychological level, which is a round level, of course, or 130 10, 130 30, 130 10. That could be conservative, and that could be basically, I think, a setup that uh, makes sense. Here, too, this candle, this four hour candle, still needs two hours or one hour 50 to be precise before it closes. Pound yen is breaking two, breaking these support trend lines. If, you know, a couple of trend lines here, moving lower as we speak here to big retracement up, <clears throat> but now breaking through that support, as you can see on the four-hour chart, making some good extensions downwards. So here too, if you took the trade upon the break, you're doing great. Uh, boy, oh boy, especially on the pound yen that goes very, very, very quickly, and it already moved, you know, 200 to 
probably almost 300 pips depending on where we're taking uh you know a lot of a lot of movement to the downside so here too uh the if we put a fit from here to here you know we're right at the minus 61.8 target and price is already responding to it as we speak let's take a look at the dollar yen hit the target you see made one more small dash down as i talked about 10 pips left 16 pips left now already res responding to that now even if it doesn't and even if it does break through it you know this is just a, a rule of mine 61.8 pips are very important uh and really often get respected now could could this be the one time it doesn't you never know but i'm not counting on it i think there's a high chance it would uh, but we don't know how to react you know for those that are contrary and they think well if it reacts why not buy it the thing is we're not sure how it will react and go flat it could make a zigzag indeed you know so one way if, if you like taking reversal trades is to take a long uh but if it goes flat then you got to be really quick on your feet and get out because that would not be a good trade to stay in uh, at this moment i think it's a bit early personally to trade it i mean if there's a strong engulfing twin here or if there are two bullish candles in a row like that um you know that could be a way to trade it to a reversal trade for a zigzag up but if price, as I said, continues sideways, you want to get out of that trade fast. Very, 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 very fast. All right. So same. Um, now, you know, we have to, of course, look when we're looking at dollar and pound yen, we've got to keep an eye on the pound USD. If it is breaking to the downside, then um, it would be better to trade uh, dollar yen reversal than pound yen reversal. Right. That's important. And it could be better to keep an eye on the pound yen short as it goes sideways like this. Then uh, it would be better if the if the pound dollar is moving down, right? Then uh, the, the pound yen later on has maybe a better chance of, of moving down too. It depends on, on how this reacts. But if it goes like a bear flag like that, same story as the dollar yen. Continuation lower, I think, looks good. <clears throat> really, it's, it's, it's almost the same in my opinion. Not now, though, because of the, the target. Same is true for the Euro yen. So let's move on. Aussie and Kiwi are moving to the upside. I talked about that uh, yesterday in the Monday video recap too, that I think it's more in a bullish bouncing spot. I use these Murray math levels to give more confidence for you to see what I was talking about as well regarding the four hour chart. You can see uh, in, in a bouncing spot on the hourly chart, I said, I need to break, I need to see price break through uh, this uh, resistance trend line here. And through these tops now that it already has done in fact all right and you can see that the price is poking through that poke through the resistance so i think it looks good for continuation higher i do think that that seems pretty likely at this moment and i would expect price to retest this resistance up in here or at the very minimum i retest this supply demand zone right here Don't forget that when trading, just a, a very simple rule of thumb uh, is to look left. Look left of your chart, look what's there, and that will give you great guidance what to do. So on this Aussie, for instance, look left. What do we see? Well, left, we see a very quick fall. All right, so I think that uh, there is not any, any resistance there. The resistance from a supply demand point of view is here is the trend line is this top those are the levels i think that are key so i think there's space to the upside and ultimately when we look at the daily chart uh, we can see that price is bouncing off support levels as it bounced off resistance kind of building a triangle and that's why i think there's a good chance of price retesting uh, the resistance and there could be once it moves up you got to be careful of up because we have to be very careful and cautious of the resistance because not only of those trend lines and the supply demand zone on the lower time frame but also because of this this pattern here potentially uh, that as you might recognize is a, is a head and shoulders and that's a reversal pattern and it could be a bigger move down as it breaks the neckline to test the medium angle trend line um, after it breaks this steeper uh, support trend line right here indicated by blue which is the neckline
<clears throat> so yeah, that would not surprise me. Up, down, and then again up. Kind of like a heartbeat on the Aussie. I could be wrong, of course, and price could hit this resistance, make a, a, a bull flag, and then start breaking. Well, if that happens, then of course I'm changing gears and, and I'm looking for upside too. I gladly uh, react to any of these uh, movements. And uh, that's why my trading plan is always trying to identify decision levels, decision zones, and you know, I try to, I do give kind of what I expect. I try to explain why I expect uh, certain movements, but I also try to indicate that this is the decision zone. If it does it otherwise, and if it goes the other way, then in, in many cases, it's, it's interesting to trade to that direction. Not immediately, but often after pullbacks. And that's how you keep your plan flexible, I think, if that makes sense. So anyhow, uh, so what kind of, Trade could be interesting to the upside here. We got a strong four hour candle. So I think putting, look at this candle, good close near the high. So I think a fib on that candle, like that makes sense. Any retracement to the 38 or 50 fib, I think would be good. We got the uh, confluence with Murray Math at the 61.8 and 38.2 fib. Look, there's a, a buy sell zone and a premium zone that those are. Excellent Murray Math levels to buy it at. There's another reason why price could bounce at those levels. And on a 50 minute chart, we're seeing kind of perhaps a small little bull flag being built. Uh, and if that is the case, then the 38.2 fib is, I think, ideal. There's also a round level of 75. So I think 75, I think the 38.2 fib is going to be the turning spot. Uh, but the stop loss, I would not want to put it below the 38. The stop loss would have to be below, at, at the very minimum, below the this bottom here. This small little supply to demand zone right here. Got tops in here. So it would have to be below that, I think. So that's a 74, um, 70 at the very minimum. If not, just below the bottom itself at 74, 57. So now it's moving up. But hopefully it gets finds resistance at this bear flag and moves down to the 38.2 fib. If it doesn't, <clears throat> and it only respects the 23.6 fib, um, that makes things a bit more tricky. Then in that case, we probably need to see. Let me check. Well, it becomes less interesting. But if it is a bullish candle. That, uh, for instance, closes like this with the close near the high, breaks this high, this candle high with a good candle like that, then a retracement of that candle would probably see a continuation of the momentum like this. And it, there could be a way to sneak in along as it retraces that candle and put the stop loss shorter, tighter, below the candle low. And try to ride this momentum to the upside. That will be the alternative. That will be the, the best way, I think, to trade a breakout to the upside if we don't get the retracement down to the 38.2 fib. For the moment, I think the 38.2 fib is the best. But if we do get a breakout, if we do get a push, an immediate push, that would be you know one method of, of trading that immediate push. All right, I hope that makes sense. That's my view, at least at this point. Looks bullish. Looking for a pullback for further upside target. I think uh, the 75, 75 level, there's uh, an overshoot. There's the, the start, the top, the bottom of a resistance zone. Uh, there's a minus 61.8 target. There are a lot of things, a lot of confluence, as you can see in that target zone. So 7570 uh, would give about 60 pip profit with the 7510 entry and uh, about a 40 risk. So that would be roughly 60 to 40. <clears throat> 
All right, the, the same is valid for the Kiwi. It gap below the support, went sideways. Instead of breaking lower, it actually broke higher, breaking resistance, breaking back above the support. And this too looks like it's breaking, pulling back, and could continue higher. So same thing as the Aussie. We could take a look at the Aussie New Zealand quickly, which one of those two looks better, perhaps the Aussie or the Kiwi. Let's take a look here. Aussie New Zealand. Well, the Aussie made a good run up here. And is now consolidating. So considering the momentum upside, Ozzy looks a bit better than the Kiwi, to my, from my point of view, at least, to my taste. Uh, unless price breaks below the support, of course, then it could be different. All right. Dollar cat breaking to the upside. I'm not a big fan of trading dollar cat at this point, but uh, it did have a good breakout candle here and then saw a retracement and followed through. So, yeah, there could be a pullback and uh, continuation, but I am not really jumping for joy to trade this. It's a good channel, though. Very neat channel, as you can see. Pretty much at the top of the channel. So, if it makes an ABC zigzag back to the bottom, back to these supports. It could be a bouncing spot. We're looking at 130, before we get to that. That could be maybe worth it. I don't know. As I said, I'm not a big fan, but that would be the thing I'm looking. I mean, that could make sense. Um, what else? Euro pound looks bullish too, by the way. But this this analysis will take a bit longer. So let me. Let me save this for a bit. Just quickly take a look at the others. All right, your odd did get a bounce. Um, you know, has been showing some momentum here, but now correcting. Does not look that fantastic, I think, at this point to trade a your odd, in my opinion. Very close to support, but showing lots of strength too to the downside. I'm on hold. Pound odd break was a very good one to the downside. We were talking about that one already. Good momentum. Trend clearly established. Uh, clear channel that is corrective. So we talked about that last week twice and said, you know, if this breaks, it's a good one. So what do we get? We got the break. And uh, first break was small. So that really was not that great. But the second one here of this bear flag as well, that was brilliant. Right. There's not only a bigger channel break, but also a smaller bear flag break. So that was great. And we see after the break, a smaller bear flag. So if you use my rule of trading the break of the break, then this was the break. This is this is actually here is the break of the break. And this is the break of the break of the break. Right. Both pretty much the best timing you can get on trading a breakout to the downside. So that was great trading. Anyone who's in that trade, well, if you want to be conservative, just put a fit from here to here and aim for the minus 61.8 at 173.06. If you want to be more aggressive, despite the news event, you know, then you could start aiming for even lower, or do, or you could do you know, part part, but a more aggressive target is 167. <clears throat> 50. Wait, one second. Yeah. If you're not in that trade and didn't take the breakout, then I think that, uh, let's see, 50-minute chart, maybe five-minute chart. The 50 fit would be nice, 174. 50 stop loss above that candle and a dip down to 173. That could easily happen uh, with the pound odd, I think. <clears throat> All right, odd yen. We talked about last week that uh, 61.8 is important. Now, eventually, it actually bounced it to minus 272 pretty strongly, but wasn't able to break. The resistance then moved down, respected the target as expected, 
but wasn't able to break resistance and there was no break at the downside eventually broke support and is now heading lower so uh, looks like it's following the yen primarily but there is some Aussie strength so it's not moving down pretty quickly but um, we're also at a potential bouncing spot again target and trend line if it breaks that though it could be of course an acceleration further down Uh, let's see. I got a question about what pivot point I use. Well, the pivot point is, uh, I don't have pivot points on the chart here at this moment. Uh, but uh, the FIB script, I'm not sure what you mean with automatic FIB script. If you're talking, are you talking about this FIB tool right here? This FIB, in FIB indicator? Uh, okay, regarding the pivot points, I can, if you're interested, just write me an email and I can tell you more about that. And if you're interested about this FIB indicator, well, it's just a standard actually uh, FIB indicator here that uh, I choose right here. And then I draw it manually from the swing high, swing low that I desire. Uh, and uh, then I get all these FIB numbers. I added FIB numbers by basically editing the tool by going to tools, then going to FIB levels. And I edited the levels <clears throat> by adding a, a space, percentage, and dollar. That indicates the, the level of the price. So not only do I have the FIB in that case, but also the price level. You can do that by adding space, percentage, and dollar. And then I add... FIB levels like the 88.6 FIB, the 78.6 FIB, uh, the 23.6 FIB, and I add minus levels, minus 27.2, minus 61.8, minus 100, minus 161.8. And those targets then, because they're minus levels, will be below the retracements or above it. I mean, it will be used as targets. So if I'm looking for a bearish retracement, I will see the minus levels as targets. So I have two things in one tool. I have a retracement tool and a target tool in one shot so i don't have to draw those separately it saves me time and i have everything at my fingertips uh, immediately yes great i'm happy that you like it too so if you know by all means uh feel free to write down these numbers um and, and use them and and, and at, at, when i started trading these were were golden um back in the day and you know we're we're highly valuable and i think they're still very valuable but you know what i'm trying to say is that now i think the information that is available is 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 quite fascinating i mean you know the information spreads quickly it's difficult to know which information is valuable um and uh you know, one could easily overlook, I think, the value of these these targets and, and, and these retracements. These were, back in the day, super, super, super uh, important. Uh, they still are, but it's just more difficult because there's so much information out there. It's just difficult to know what is what is really good and what is maybe less good. Um, so it kind of just gets lost in all the clutter, I guess. Um, but, yeah, I think very, very important. Indeed. So, anyhow. Um, <clears throat> Euro pound. I think it's uh, interesting because we got a pretty strong bounce. We already, you know, look here we got the um, head and inverted head and shoulders, and we got some good rally to the upside. And if we see on a on a weekly chart that we're looking at a five wave pattern, this is a wave one, two. Got a good impulse three, got a good correction four. This looks like a five. Now within wave five on a daily chart, we see uh, that price is basically making a uh, wave one, two. The Brexit was a three. This is looking like a four and we could easily be in a wave five. All right, so it looks like we got at least wave five of five left. So that could be a very interesting trade. Now waves five of fives are not the best ever, but, you know, if it happens on the daily chart, there's still a lot of trips that can be made on the four-hour and one-hour chart, if not on the daily chart itself as well. So I think it's pretty good potential. I like this euro-pound upside 
idea. Uh, it respected uh, the 38.2 fib here after an ABC zigzag down. We got all the things that are, as I just said, pointing into its favor. So this could easily be a wave four. We don't know how long wave four could last. What could happen is, of course, an extension of the triangle like this, for instance, uh, and price could stay confined to this triangle and even expand it sideways before it makes a bigger upside. I don't know how long it will last because wave four could be very lengthy. Uh, but uh, if this is all of wave four and price starts to break above this resistance, I would say 84, uh, the, you know, the 84.25, if it breaks 84.25, there is already a chance that price could be in a bullish breakout. I say there's a chance because price, as I said, could move up to 85.50, turn around back and expand this extension. It could also break out, make a bull flag and continue. So yes, once we're above 84.25, I think that we're looking at a, a breakout. Once we get above this resistance, uh, we are looking at a potential breakout and uh, move up. Not a guarantee, but there is a good chance. All in all though, eventually I would expect the upside to happen. I'm just not sure when. Um, this seems to be a bit of a short wave four so far. But all in all, I think that Europound will break this top without breaking the 50 fib. Uh, well, specifically, it shouldn't go back below this bottom. Why? Because on a, yeah, sorry, in an impulse, this is, if this is a wave one and this is a wave two and this is a three and four, it shouldn't go back into wave one territory. That is basically the top here, equal to 61.8. That's the very max retracement we could expect. And I would never expect it to go that deep. But if it does, and it does break below it, then this whole idea is, is, is out of the window. <clears throat> and uh, I would have to cross through this plan and get rid of it. More likely, though, would be a 50. That's possible. It could happen that it retraces back lower if it breaks the support. It could make an extended correction down to the 50, which I would expect to be a bouncing spot. All right, so. That's my view on Euro Pound. Found it. Uh, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of trading Euro Pound, but was doing some analysis on the weekend uh, and found that th that this particular structure could be interesting. So, uh, oh yeah, and one more thing regarding the the monthly. Really, if, if we get that, you know, we're in a pretty big impulse, of course, and we broke a lot of resistance lines with these upside. We had a strong down tr trend on the Euro Pound, lasting. Uh, Oof, well, what was it? Almost two years, I guess. But a lot of resistance broken just a couple of months. So yeah, we could, you know, price if it makes this wave four, five, wave five could easily go to 88, 89 here where the targets are at. And if it breaks above that, well, maybe even higher to 91, 92, I guess. All right. So recap. Uh, first of all, do you have any questions? you could uh, have if you have any questions uh, please say now through the chat second is what did i think are after we analyzed all of this uh, the best things to watch for at the moment i think that the majors are interesting your dollar if it is something like this and uh, you know retracement of that candle a bit and the continuation or the break of the channel are interesting the other idea is to push up to the 78.6 FIB with a pending order there. I think are interesting ideas and trade plans. Dollar, pound dollar could be a breakout to the downside, but we have to see if this breakout candle survives with the low, with the closing the low. Dollar yen could be good for downside too. It is a breakout. It is an impulse to the downside, but not right now with a target nearby. We need to see a zigzag up or a bear flag. So those three, yeah, those three look interesting. The pound yen, euro yen kind of follows suit with the pound dollar yen, excuse me. Adi was the key we are breaking to the upside, but the Adi, Aussie looks a bit better for upside from the 38.2 fib up to uh, the 75, 75 target, 75, 70 target. 
Uh, uh, let's see. Euro, no, pound odd. I think uh, might make sense to see a pullback continuation here, that too. And Euro pound upside could be interesting. Maybe that is more of a long-term idea though, I think. But uh, could play out sooner than we think. And I guess that was it. Yeah. So we got one question. What is the target for Aussie New Zealand? Let's see, I don't have a target you know, at the top of my head because uh, I was only looking at Aussie, New Zealand to see you know, which one I like more, Aussie or Kiwi. Um, if it does break this resistance, I think the best probably would just be to be put a fib from here to here. Twenty three point six pounds, thirty eight point two pounds. I don't know. We could also put the fib from here to here. Both really the fibs not really very precise. Um, target the first target is one hundred eight ninety minus two seven two target. Let's take a look at the daily. If we put an opposite fib from here to here, let's see where the resistance levels are. 108.20 is the 50 fib. So I, I would keep an eye on these fibs. Um, you know, it depends on how aggressive I want to be um, with targets. If I aim for the nearest fib or if I maybe aim for one or two fibs further. Now, considering the overall picture where we have the New Zealand pretty much moving downwards, <clears throat> especially after this break. Being a bit more conservative about the target, I think would make sense. And uh, aiming for 108.20, probably uh, the best uh, way to approach it. But a split of the target, you know, 108, one part at 108.20 and the other part at a bit higher is another way of doing that. Uh, whether the price goes up or down, I, uh, do I determine it with wave count? Well, yes. In some cases, uh, yes. Not always, because like for our New Zealand, I don't have a wave count, for instance. But what I do look at is impulse and correction. So basically, it's the quick way of, of, of analyzing. Wave count, of course, would then label impulse and corrections into a story, into a... Uh, into a sequence uh, and impulse and correction is is does not do that you can just look at the price movement and make conclusions simple conclusions from that so if i had to give one overall answer for all the pairs because i don't use wave analysis necessarily for all pairs then it's impulse and correction probably together with trend But trend is like a support, I would say, uh, and momentum and correction are, are are maybe the the number one, and trend is a supporting kind of argument. It's a uh, it's basically I would say a a mixture of three things. When I'm look, when I'm doing my analysis, is basically uh, momentum. Uh, correction plus the trend I talked about. That's one part. So direction, in fact. Uh, second is a support and resistance because direction can can change at uh, at strong support levels or support and resistance levels or confluence. And three is patterns. Uh, you know, like candlestick patterns, chart patterns, divergence patterns, give us indications about how strong is one, how strong is direction, how strong is support or resistance, and who of these two, momentum or support, will win. Because it's always a battle between these two. 
and we're trying to determine which of those two is the most likely winner and trade accordingly. And patterns will give us a bit more clue about that, uh, that battle. If that makes sense. Does that make sense? So these three things are my main uh, items. It's like a triangle in a way, maybe. So uh, one, two, three. These three things, like a list, I check off uh, as we go along. So, but if you have any follow-up questions, let me know. Let's see. Any way to have a quick explanation on momentum correction? Uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that tomorrow. I, will, I can give a quick one now. Uh, if you're interested in a more uh, more info, we're going to talk by coincidence about that in Forex strategy in tomorrow's session, same time, same place. And it's interesting because on Thursday, we're going to talk about the breakout and, and fakeouts. As, as well, so there it's natural to talk about momentum and correction too. That's the whole point of breakouts. So that's it's a good week in that case. Quickly, basically, momentum is, is a fast-paced, one-directional movement. Or, you know, majority of the movement is, is, is in one direction. Whereas a correction uh, occurs in different manners, in different ways, but... It's typically slow, mild paced, shallow angled, sideways, um, or sometimes fast like this. Corrections, where price goes back to the mean, back to the average, and where impulse is moving away from the average. So impulse, you would see price moving away from moving averages, from short term moving averages at the very minimum. Whereas Corrections would have price going back to the moving averages either passively by going sideways or aggressively by going more impulsively back to those averages, back to, to the mean. And then tomorrow I'll show you or, or explain you know, how I determine which is impulse and, and how do I uh when i think it's over and all these details all right thank you so much uh, if you're interested once again uh in more info regarding uh trading education webinars but also please uh, discover our website there's a lot of things here analysis fundamental technical wave traders blog where nenneth and i write uh, heat maps. There's a lot of things you can do with the Web Trader and MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. Uh, there is a reason why Admiral Markets won uh, the best MT4 uh, trader, best MT4 broker award in the UK last year, and certainly part of it uh, is this MetaTrader 4 Supreme Edition. So um, I would encourage you to take a look uh, after this webinar and discover these things. Education, you also see articles and. There is a ton for, for you to, um, to learn as well, besides trade. So hopefully you'll find out uh, yourself and uh, hope to see you in these webinars. But above all, wish you good trading. Cheers.